maybe not focus in. Hello, recording. Um, the uh, I, what I thought we could do is maybe instead of focusing on um, Jonah and the Nineveh fast and all of that as well, what I thought we could do is maybe focus on very specific sins um, and kind of go through that, um, if that makes sense. So I thought today we can't go through a lot because it's only three days, um, but that's okay. We can at least do something. Um, and I thought if we're going to do the fast of Nineveh um, and where we are and, and, and entering into all this as well, I thought the first place that we could probably start, I love this icon, by the way, of, um, of Jonah coming out of the whale. Do you notice the uh, the empty tomb here and then the cross here? Um, wonderful theological point for another day. Um, but so goes. I thought we'll start in with the way I generally feel when I go in the front of the fridge during um, a fasting period. I stand there like we hit like I love to cook. I love to do all these things. Many people um, know that um, I really, really enjoy making scrumptious food um, and giving it to people and things like that as well. But when we hit a fasting period, that first like few days or that first week, um, everybody just knows that I kind of shut down and I just stand there and I like stare at the fridge and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Um, this is all these things that I wish I could eat, but it's not there. I don't know what to do with it. My wife, um, thanks be to God, is much better than me. And she jumps into action and she, um, as she always does. And then she uh, is able to, to do that before I can start helping out after I start to regain myself. So um, this is generally what it is. So I thought the first place we should start when we talk about fasting is gluttony. It's a sin that we don't always think about. It's a sin that we don't always focus on because we're so focused on some of the other ones, which we will discuss in the next few days. But I thought maybe we should think about this. We should think about gluttony as a thing, right? It's not something that um, generally is on our mind. But if you look scripturally, um, it all starts with food, doesn't it? When you go back to Genesis 3, 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, right? The first sin that we see, right? Adam and Eve falling, it starts with food, meaning the serpent comes and tempts them um, and gives a temptation according to food. She trusted in her own eyesight that it was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise. And so you can see that it's igniting the desires in her heart for food. Had she fasted, it would have been a different story, right? Um, but this is where I noticed as well, when you go to the first temptation, the temptation of Christ, right? Um, when our Lord is out in the wilderness, he's been fasting for 40 days, right? Nothing. Um, and Satan comes and tempts him. And the first thing that he tempts him with is food. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is first tempted with food, right? Meaning that Satan comes to him in the same way that he went to Eve. He comes at him with food. But now our Lord responds, and the response is really beautiful when you look at it. He responds not just saying no, but he goes back to the word of God and says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word proceeds from the mouth of God. Do you see what's happening there? Um, it's a really cool, it's really pretty amazing um, what our Lord is doing in that moment. You understand? Um, if I were to put this picture in front of you, which I am doing right now, like our eyes are drawn, right? Um, on some level, our eyes might be drawn to the cross. There are times in life, there are times in my life where my eye is drawn to the cheeseburger, right? And maybe I'm tempting you, maybe I'm being tough on you because we're at the beginning of this fast, but it's hard. We we have like something in us that, that there are certain times where it's like, you know what? I can't look at the cross because man, I can't take my eyes off the cheeseburger. There are times in life where I'm looking at the cheeseburger, but you know what? The cross is drawing me away, right? And I'm moving towards that. Um, it's okay. It's part of it. But you can sense that there's this conflicting desire that's going on in us, right? Um, Romans 8, 5, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit. 
we have these competing desires in our heart, right? We've got the desires of the spirit and we've got the desires of the flesh. And sometimes we try to quench the desires of the spirit with things that satisfy the flesh. And that can become like unhealthy coping mechanisms that we tend to move into as well. We retreat into the Ben and Jerry's. We retreat into the food, right? Um, or, or the drink, right? But the desires of the flesh are there. And it never really satisfies that. You see it in Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk by the spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. We're called to be subject to that. And then the next verse right after it. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would there are times where we're just like you're headed in the right direction there's a beautiful passage even in um in one of c.s lewis's books right where the man is starting to connect with god but then he's suddenly distracted oh i'm hungry let me go get some lunch right there are these moments where we're even like the, the, the just appealing to our desires distract us from from what we are the desires of the flesh are contrary to the desires of the spirit. And we're called to bring the desires of the flesh in subjection to the spirit. And that's what fasting does for you. That's what these seasons of fasting do for us. It strengthens us to let go of these things and to focus on um, the desires of, of, of the spirit. Now, let me give you some very, very more practical advice on this. Um, when it comes to gluttony, for example, St. John Cassian in the Philokalia, he writes, um, a clear rule for self-control handed down by the fathers is this. Stop eating while still hungry and do not continue until you are satisfied. What the apostle said, make no provision to fulfill the desires of the flesh. Right? It's hard. It's hard. Sometimes you're like, oh, man, that was so good. I just want another bite. I just want to go back for the next, right? A rule to kind of help you on this is just say, stop eating while you're still hungry. Do not continue until you're satisfied, right? It's okay to have good food. It's okay to have a good meal, a wonderful meal, right? But at some point, we have to know our limits. When, when okay, I need to stop here, move on. And sometimes it even takes a minute. If you eat really fast, it takes a little bit for your brain to catch up to your stomach too, right? Um, to realize that you're full right? That's a real thing. You see this in kids, especially, right? Um, but if you go a little bit slower, you start to realize this. There's another more, this is like a, a super long one, but I'm taking you a little bit deeper. If you want to go super deep into it, um, let's go, go with me here. If it's too much it's Sunday, you guys are like, oh man, I had a long day at church. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. That's okay. I give you permission to completely zone out right now. And we'll be all right. According to Sir Gregory the Sinai, there are three, three degrees of eating. Temperance. Temperance is when someone wants to eat some more food, but it stains. Rising from the table, still somewhat hungry. That's called temperance. When I when I desire more, but I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm still going to step away and walk away from the table. Sufficiency is when someone eats what is needed and sufficient for normal nourishment. Sufficiency is what I need. Satiety is when someone eats more than enough and is more than satisfied. And that's really the issue, right? Now, if you cannot keep the first two degrees, I mean, the first two degrees are temperance and sufficiency, and that's where we want to be, somewhere between those, right? At least do not be a glutton. Remembering the words of our Lord, woe unto you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Remember also that the rich man who ate in this present life sumptuously every day. This comes from the para, this comes from Lazarus and the rich man. Remember that he actually ate, and the word used is sumptuously, every day, but was deprived of the desired bosom of Abraham in the next life, simply because of this sumptuous eating. And ignoring that Lazarus was at his, was at his gate, um, just desiring to have um, some food. Good. Have I taken you too deep? If I've got you, if I've lost you, come right back. We'll be all right. But that's temperance, that's sufficiency, and that's satiety um, when it comes to gluttony. Let's go back to St. John's 6, 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Right? Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. This and understanding our hunger and feeling our hunger. We approach Kurbana, we approach all these things with fasting. Have you ever noticed when you open up your Bible on 
a, a full stomach, it can become hard to concentrate. When you go and you pray on a full stomach, it can become very hard to concentrate, right? There's some, there's a relationship between all the things that we do. Again, what I'm saying is none of this has to do with starving ourselves. That's not at all any of what we've talked about today, right? We talked about satiety, we talked about sufficiency, and we talked about being too much. So gluttony and the fasting period that we have is there. And if you want specific rules on this, there's no real, um, if we want to go even deeper into it, we can see that there's no clear rule that applies to everybody because everybody is different. Everybody is in a different situation and different place. And we have to ease ourselves into that fasting sometimes as well. Um, but nevertheless, we're in a three-day fast and it's a strict fast. Um, we're called to be strict in that. After the three days, we're going to finish. And there's a quote from His Holiness Pope Shenouda III where he talks about after we break the fast, we the 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 worry is, and sometimes we'll we'll break the fast on maybe Thursday or maybe it's Easter week, and in the process of doing that, we can negate everything that we've done up until then. Does that make sense? We we feast and we overfeast and we go nuts with it, right? Um, so here he's talking about the fifty days after Easter where we're not fasting, right? Because it doesn't mean you should lose your self control. Otherwise, when he eats, is it? Whether it is an appropriate time or to eat or not, it will be in such a way that he harms himself spiritually and physically and loses the spiritual benefits of the Lenten fast and the Holy Week. All right, let's close it out here. Um, understand that, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. That there are soul thirsts and hunger. My soul thirsts for you, the living God, right? We, we, we say that in Psalm 63. Uh, my flesh longs for you. Deuteronomy 8.3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by man, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And again, coming back to, to what our Lord answered. And this is what he's quoting from. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Um, the goal in the next three days is to take a, to step back from our earthly, um, from our fleshly desires and to focus on our spiritual hunger and our spiritual thirst and our spiritual needs and to feel that. And it's okay. Um, and sometimes, you know, that hunger can, can feel a little bit of pain there, right? But at the same time, um, we draw near to the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, I am hungry for you. I do need you. As much as I need food, as much as I need everything else in my life, I need you even more. And to come before him and, and to be nourished by that, to open up the scriptures, to open up the prayers, to be part of these things, to soak these things in, and to feed our thirsty soul, right? I mean, to feed our, 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 our the thirsty flesh, I mean, our, our hungry soul. You get the idea. Um, I'm losing the words. That's my cue to, to close it out. Here we are um, with the with, with the, the evening. Um, I hope it's a wonderful way to kind of um, enter into um, the rest of this night um, and begin um, the Holy Fast, um, on a good note, this is why we do what we do. There's a lot that goes on spiritually between our physical um, desires and these things like that as well. Um, so I encourage you, if you've already, whatever rule you've already picked out, you haven't picked out a rule, give something up, take something on, um, and continue for the next three days um, in, a, in, a, in a strict um, fast, and to dedicate this time to the Lord um, to get right with yourself and your soul. Sound good? You're right. Now, glory on worship always be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.